One day the Holy Spirit told me to start writing a blog about politics. I said, I'm a soul winner. I'm not going to do that. I said, evangelists are, are infamous for being stupid about politics. The Lord said, I told two other people to write that blog and they wouldn't do it. And I began to feel resentment. Even though the blog became successful, and one of the main reasons that you are here today is because of the, what God did through that blog, that crazy, stupid thing that I would write sometimes in the middle of the night, that now is approaching 15 million views. 15 million. But I've never enjoyed it. Somebody said, well, you ought to be thrilled. I'm not thrilled, I'm mad because pastors were too afraid to condemn abortion from their pulpits. They wouldn't stand for biblical marriage. They didn't realize when a candidate was of the devil. This is not jeopardy. This is not final jeopardy right here. The Bible can tell you when there's evil in the land. And someone said, well, we Christians ought to just be sweet when evil takes over our nation. That is not in the Bible. I don't know what book you're reading. I mean, that is maybe in the sevenfold path of enlightenment of Zen Buddhism, but it's not in our owner's manual. Here's what our owner's manual says in Psalm 94. Will you have fellowship with the throne that devises laws by evil? And then someone will say, well, Romans 13 says we're to submit to government. Yeah, listen, you've been gargling with gunpowder and shooting your mouth off. There's a magic to the Bible. Read the entire verse. How many of you know that? Don't pull it out. In verse 3 of Romans 13, it says these words. For the authorities that are of God are not a threat to the righteous. That's why in Acts chapter 5, Peter looked at him and said, whether it's right to obey you or God, and if I don't get an amen, I am seriously going to have a conniption. Because i got to tell you something. God is not being obeyed by ministers in California. Listen, if you're obeying Satan and not God then you have abandoned your duty. And I'm going to tell you something. You know, you say, Mara, you may never get to say this again because folks are going to riot, but I'm going to. I want you to listen to a statement. Yes, we've gotten visibility. Yes, Mario Marilla Ministries is being watched. But celebrity, visibility, or a God-given line of credit to be exhausted in the act of telling the truth. That's what it's for. That's what it's about. And I want to tell you the truth. Your people are hurting. You need to stop worrying about what Gavin Newsom thinks. You need to stop worrying about what woke pastors think and start thinking about the sheep that God put in your care. Because, listen, it's their little girl that's going to be in the bathroom when the man walks in. It's their little girl that's going to be beat in sports by somebody that doesn't know what gender they are. And it's time for us to quit being the stupid people of California and start being the army of God in California. Recently, a group of pastors invented a new uh, movement called Christian Nationalists. And they wrote a letter asking you to sign it to condemn white supremacy and Christian nationalism. And I've got two words for you, grape nuts. <laughs> what in the world do you mean by grape nuts? How many of you have ever opened a box of grape nuts? Did you see any grapes? Did you see any nuts? There is no Christian nationalism in America. Let me talk to you for a moment. 
Here they, they on, on January the 6th, that was a disaster. It shouldn't have happened. But it wasn't what the press said, that four people died. One died, and they even lied about one of the people that did lie. And during his speech that day, President Trump said, I want no violence and no breaking of the law. And some of those people that were in that alleged insurrection were not even Trump supporters. They were leftist radicals paid to be there. So all of these wispy, cowardly, disgusting pastors invent Christian nationalism, paint with a broad brush against Trump supporters, and why on earth would you want to do, look at me, why would you want to do that? 80 million people voted for that man. And you know what? They are the most fertile, soul-winning field in America. They are the ones that are most likely to walk to the front and get saved because they love their family. They're paying taxes. And God forbid that you should love America and the anthem. What is wrong with these leaders? They're so open-minded, their brains have fallen out. You know, I'm from the Bay Area, so I'm very familiar with what happened at People's Temple. But we have a new liquid. I call it Woca-Cola. <laughs> and when you drink it, you don't know your gender, number one. And number two, you forget about everyone. In a sense, you become fascinated and fixated with the problems of society and not your own heart. If you want to understand why the left is so inclined to hypocrisy, is they're never looking at themselves. Our founding fathers decided that America would be a place where people would work on their moral condition, not on the perceived evils of the mass, and to force the mass to think like me. And ladies and gentlemen, there is a belief and a, a, a dichotomy, something that I want God to do to this crowd. I want you to shake something off. I want you to shake something off. And what I want you to shake off is remember that on the island of Miletus that Paul was bitten by a viper. That was an arrogant viper. That was a a very egotistic uh, viper. It would make you egotistic if everything you ever bit dropped dead in about 90 seconds. And so when it bit Paul, a lot of misnomers started. And it said, this man must be a murderer. And that's what cancel culture does. It, it snaps onto an arm and says, that person's evil. That, that statement doesn't fit us. You see, the left is entitled to their opinion, but they're not entitled to their own set of facts. So truth still matters. So here, watch me, that viper attached to the arm. Paul didn't stand there and say, well, I must have sinned or God wouldn't have let me get bit. He didn't crack open some seeker sensitive book to determine for himself if maybe there's something going to come out of this, this event that's going to enhance my sense of self-worth. He shook it off into the fire. Let me tell you what, the church in California, pastor, please listen to me, shake off the fear of the virus. Shake off the fear of the government and throw it in the fire. Come on. Throw it in the fire and let God move and let the power flow and let the Holy Spirit have his way because we're going to see miracles.